All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, this Bleacher Report live stream is always a special shout out and thank you to Bleacher Report for having me. I am Jake Ellenbogen and today I'm going to be talking about some wild offseason trade ideas uh, for the Rams. Now, I say wild, but I also think in some case this could happen. Now, I'm not saying it's going to, um, but these five trades I think are realistic in a sense that it's not just Patrick Mahomes and, you know, it's not just Tom Brady coming back. I mean, these are these are players that have been listed that could be traded. Um, so we're going to get into it. Uh, before we dive into it, be sure to follow me on all social media, including this app at JK Bogan. And of course, uh, check out my YouTube channel when you get a chance. It's Jake Ellen Bogan, and you'll find it. It's on YouTube. So uh, let's start off. The Rams here, I, I wanted to make this one, I, I wanted to make it more you know, varied, but the problem is I look at this team, I don't feel like they're going to spend a ton uh, of draft capital to acquire some of the other positions. So I really came down to the fact that I think wide receiver is the direction that they would go in. The reason being is that you only have three guys under contract next year at the wide receiver position. I've talked about it numerous times. You got Cooper Cup, you got Puka Nakua, and now Jordan Winnington. Because those contracts are the only ones on the roster at that position next year, I do think the Rams could be aggressive. They could ramp it up sooner or later. Um to go out and get another receiver. And I mean, we we talked about the idea of them adding a receiver early on in the draft. I still think they probably wanted to do that. And the board just didn't work out in their favor. And they wanted to go in a different direction based on the board. Um, we'll never know. But the first one here is a wide receiver from the Denver Broncos. I have Cortland Sutton going to the Rams here in a trade. Uh, this first wild offseason trade scenario. Um, the Rams would give up the 2025 third round pick and a 2026 fourth round pick and former fifth round pick from last year's draft, Nick Hampton, the edge defender out of App State. In return, they would acquire Cortland Sutton. Now, some might say, how do you not part with Tutu Atwell after that? I mean, you know, and you have the Tutu Atwell jersey in the background. So obviously I'm a, I'm a fan of his, um, but he is not under contract next year. He's in a contract year. Corlin Sutton is somebody that can go up and high point the football. Very similar to some of the wide receivers that Stafford played with in Detroit. You look at the Marvin Joneses of the world, guys that can go up and make that play. But Corlin Sutton is a very, very talented receiver that I think would absolutely thrive in the Rams offense. This is the first one. It's definitely not the best one. However, I feel like the first one is the most realistic of the five I'm going to mention. I think Sutton is a real possibility to join the Rams. Uh, this is a possibility to be a trade here. And I wouldn't be against it. I think if you did this, this is really the wide receiver is the only area I think the Rams can really upgrade. And you still have Demarcus Robinson. You have two, two out. Well, you know, you have Jordan Winnington. You, you added Tyler Johnson back onto the roster. They have plenty of depth. So I'm not saying that I would go this route. Um, hundred percent. I would not be against it, but definitely something to, to keep an eye on for sure. Um, because, you know, when, when I look at Corlin Sutton, I mean, this is definitely a, a starting capable uh, wide receiver. OK, and in addition to that, you already have Puka Niku and you have Cooper Cup and, you, you know, you feel good about those guys. Well, Corlin Sutton could definitely add to that. So we move on to number two here, folks. And the number two, um, you know, trade idea is none other than T Higgins of the Cincinnati Bengals. Now this would cost a little bit more. I have the Rams giving up a 2025 uh, third, a fourth as well in 2025. So you wouldn't have your second, your third or your fourth round pick. You would be getting a compensatory pick for the Raheem Morris loss. So there is that. So you would really next year only have your first round pick and a Raheem Morris compensatory pick in the first, you know, two days. But T Higgins, and in addition to those two picks, Tutu Atwell. 
Um, why would the Bengals do this? Because they tagged T. Higgins. T. Higgins is going to cost over $20 million this year alone, and then you have to sign him, and he's going to cost over $30 million a year. So based on this, the Rams would be acquiring T. Higgins in this one, younger receiver in his mid-20s, just entering his prime to grow and develop with Puka Nakua and have maybe a year or two with Cooper Cup. This would be a very nice scenario. Um, and I want to make this very clear. I want Tutu Atwell to get an opportunity. I want him to be brought back after this season. Um, but the reality of the situation is he is in a contract here. And I think the Bengals could get a lot out of him. That play style and everything I think fits Joe Burrow and just what they want to do in the passing game. So Higgins goes to the Rams here for 2025 third and fourth plus 2-2 two, two Atwell. And the Rams get one once again, Corlin Sutton. Now you go out and you get T. Higgins in this scenario. And you're going out and getting a jump ball uh, wide receiver. Now, how would they make it work? That is kind of up in the air. Um, they could make it work. They probably have to restructure Matthew Stafford, which at some point or another, uh, the Matthew Stafford deal is going to have to happen. He wants more guaranteed money. And I'm sure the Rams will find a way where that benefits both parties and they'll probably save some money in the process of doing that. So we move on. Uh, different position here, okay? This is the only different position on the entire list. So number three out of five, Marshawn Lattimore of the New Orleans Saints to the Rams for a 2025 third, a 2026 fourth, and Darion Kendrick. Now, the Saints have said they feel really good that Mar uh, Marshawn Lattimore, they squashed the beef, he'll be back, everything will be good, but we don't know for sure. And we also don't know, you know, where the Rams' long-term plan is at cornerback. They surprisingly didn't take a cornerback in this past draft. They only added one guy that I think can genuinely make the team out of the cornerbacks in UDFA, and that's Josh Wallace out of Michigan. And they still have draft capital that they've spent on this position, a fourth rounder in Kobe Durant, sixth rounder in Darion Kendrick, who I have getting sent out in this trade, and a sixth rounder in Trey Tomlinson. So with that said, you talk about Trey White and, of course, Darius Williams. Those guys are only guaranteed one year. Trey White is on a one-year deal. Darius Williams is on a three-year deal that only has one year guaranteed. So with those guys being a little bit older, do they decide to go with Marshawn Lattimore? I mean, then again, Marshawn Lattimore is kind of the same age as Trey White. But the point I'm making here is Lattimore is fantastic. He's a great player. And this is the direction the Rams have gone in in the past, going out and getting a big name. Um I even flirted with the idea it wouldn't happen now, but maybe if the Dolphins have kind of a down year, uh, flirted with the idea of maybe Jalen Ramsey coming back because I could definitely see it. Um, I think that would be very intriguing. But I wanted to go with corner here, folks, because I feel like when you look at the wide receivers, a lot of people kind of look in like, I don't know if we really need a receiver. And to be fair, you might be right this year. This is more of, you know, the receivers were more of a long-term play. The cornerback, though, that is really not being talked about. Is Kobe Durant in year three going to go back to what he did in his rookie year? If so, the Rams look pretty good at corner. But if he doesn't, and neither of these guys take, a, you know, another step, and then you have just a bunch of rentals that are a little bit older, I mean, Trey White being a little bit younger, but Darius Williams... At that point, you have to figure out the future at cornerback. And I had the Rams in my way too early uh, mock draft taking a corner out of Washington. Well, now he just transferred to Oregon. But I had them taking a corner because that's where I think the biggest need is, you know, next year. So why not squash that and go after Marshawn Lattimore? Now, would the Saints part with him? That is the question. But like I said, you give it time. It's the same thing, you know, what I was just talking about. If you give it time, Marshawn Lattimore could become available. If you give it time and say the Dolphins have a bad year, Jalen Ramsey could be available. So it's something that's interesting. Um, just know that we have two more on this list, and neither of those two guys are going to have anything to do with the 49ers because I know, I get it, Debo Samuel's out there. 
you know, in mentions and in, in trade conversation and Brandon Ayuk, we heard it all off season. There is no way at all that you could tell me the Rams would be able to acquire one of those receivers from their division rival. There's also no way that you could tell me the Rams would be willing to give up draft capital to their division rival. It just doesn't work out. It's why we very rarely see intra divisional trades. We saw it, you know, I think last, like a, a big one was TJ Hawkinson from the lions to the Vikings. And I still think that was a stupid trade by the lions to send him to the Vikings. And, you know, obviously it looks like it's paying out, you know, for the Lions. They did find Sam Laporta, but that's not even the issue. I don't like trading great players to your divisional rival. I don't like trading draft capital to your divisional rival. And so I will stay away from that. But the next two here, this one kind of takes it a dial back a little bit. This is more of an all in trade. This is more of a here and now. This is more of, hey, let's go win the freaking Super Bowl. So. Marshawn Lattimore can definitely help you out with that and T Higgins and Corlin Sutton. But those three have an element of being longer term pieces, building blocks, if you will. But Deandre Hopkins from the Tennessee Titans, I still am not convinced he is going to be on this roster for the full year. Okay. I'm just not convinced by it. They went out and got Calvin Ridley. They're hoping Traylon Burks can take the next step. I just don't see it. So I think DeAndre Hopkins could be traded. And I think the Rams might be interested in something like that. If they're really trying to upgrade wide receiver, they've been in talks to try to acquire Cortland Sutton. They have been looking at wide receivers. They were interested in Mike Evans before he re-upped. So that tells me that there's something that's not quite figured out or, you know, it's not quite, you know, fully done I don't think this roster, and I don't know what trade they're going to make, but I don't think this roster is fully set. Like the roster we see after the trade deadline is probably going to be a little different. I do think they're going to make a move. They might make a move this off season. We'll see what ends up happening. But DeAndre Hopkins for a 2025 fifth, a 2026 sixth, and two two Atwell. Titans get a little bit younger with Atwell. Maybe he's somebody they can bring back. Um, DeAndre Hopkins. Yes, the Rams get older in the wide receiver room, but this to me is a trade that you make if you feel like he is the missing piece and you were just trying to win the Super Bowl this year and he can help you out. I am not by any stretch saying I would do this. To me, if I'm the Rams, I'm trading for not right now, not to go all in. I'm trading for that Jalen Ramsey piece. Okay, that's the only argument you will get out of me to make a trade for a player right now. When Jalen Ramsey was acquired at age 25, that was valuable. That was a long-term asset that led to a Super Bowl win. Okay, that is the type of trade that you should be considering because you are getting up there in age. Stafford, you know, that window is closing. So... I'm not necessarily about to go just balls to the wall and go all in on DeAndre Hopkins, but it is something that I could see them doing. I would rather go with Cortland Sutton. I'd rather go with T Higgins. I'd rather go with Marshawn Lattimore. But this last one is not Justin Jefferson, folks, because I don't really think that's realistic. But you know what's a little realistic that's not being talked about? It's not Mark, Micah Parsons, but it's the guy on the same team as him, C.D. Lamb. Okay, hear me out when I say this. The Dallas Cowboys have a lot of money they're going to have to shell out here, or they're not going to shell any of it out, and they're just going to trade away all their players soon. I don't really think that's the case. You have to pay Micah Parsons. You have to pay Dak Prescott. You have to pay C.D. Lamb. Well, it doesn't sound great. C.D. Lamb holding out. There's rumors about trades. C.D. Lamb on the Rams with his jump ball ability, his body control, his route running, his natural hands ability, and then you know his ability as a blocker, he would fit the Rams like an absolute glove. C.D. Lamb on the Rams with Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, Matthew Stafford throwing him the rock, that would be a sight to see. Now, I am not at all saying that CeeDee Lamb will be a Ram, but I think this is more realistic and this is something we should talk about more than Justin Jefferson. 
Justin Jefferson's not realistic. The Vikings aren't going to trade him away because quite honestly, he's the best receiver in football. And it's going to be really hard for a young quarterback that you just drafted in JJ McCarthy to develop. If the first thing you do is trade away the number one receiver, that is your get out of jail free card. Essentially you went out and you got JJ McCarthy, right? So you can develop him knowing he's going to have a number one guy and he's going to have Jordan Addison as well. If you trade away C, uh, excuse me, if you don't, if you trade away Justin Jefferson, now you're making it harder on your young quarterback you just drafted. And furthermore, what message does that send to your locker room, to your organization, and to your fan base? He is not one of those players that you trade away unless you absolutely have to. If he gives you no choice, okay. But for whatever reason, we continue to talk about him, which I don't really think is realistic, but we never mention C.D. Lamb. And I think C.D. Lamb is actually realistic. I'm not saying it's going to happen. That is not what I'm saying. But C.D. Lamb is 25 years old. He just turned 25 in April. This is the Jalen Ramsey type of move that you would be making. C.D. Lamb in 2022 had 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns, and 107 receptions. What did he do in 2023? 135 receptions, 1,749 yards, and 12 touchdowns. The guy is a maniac after the catch. This is exactly the type of guy that would fit a Sean McVay offense, okay? He fits any offense, to be fair. He also fits the 49ers offense. So I'm not saying Dallas would make a trade with the 49ers because that would be sacrilegious, but... If the 49ers were to give up Brandon Ayuk and an extra pick to level up and get CD Lamb, and you had a you had a shot at him and you didn't get him, well, you'd be paying for it for a long time. So, the five that I have: Corlin Sutton to the Rams for a 2025 third, a 2026 fourth, and Nick Hampton. T Higgins to the Rams. For a 2025 third, a 2025 fourth, and two two Outwell. Marshawn Lattimore to the Rams for a 2025 third, a 2026 fourth, and Darion Kendrick. DeAndre Hopkins to the Rams for a 2025 fifth, a 2026 sixth, and two two Outwell. And last but certainly not least, CD Lamb to the Rams for a 2025 third, a fourth, and a 2026 second. Now, is that enough? I think absolutely it is. I understand he's 25. I understand he is electric. I understand he's one of the best receivers in football. But the problem is CD Lamb's value is going to go down because you have to pay him long term. If the Cowboys trade him away, they're not getting five first round picks. They're not doing anything like that. A 2025 third, a fourth, and a 2026 second is probably the starting point, and they'd probably ask for a second. The Rams don't have it because they traded that away to move up to get Braden Fisk in this past draft, but I think that would be a good deal if the Rams could do it. You sign him to a long-term deal. After Cooper Cup falls off, then you have Puka Nakua and CeeDee Lamb, and it's not just for Stafford. You're signing CeeDee Lamb for your next quarterback, which is going to ante it up. So look, I feel really good about the idea of going out and getting somebody like that, but I'm not necessarily saying the Rams need to throw caution in the wind and go after some crazy, uh, you know, trade to just go all in. I understand going all in sounds fun. I understand going, uh, you know, after uh, a Super Bowl sounds great. But I feel like you can do that and also keep an eye on the future. And C.D. Lamb helps you now and in the future. Corlin Sutton does it. T. Higgins does it. Marshawn Lattimore does it. DeAndre Hopkins only helps you really now. So I'd like to see them avoid the rentals. I'd like to see them avoid the uh, all-in approach and go after a Jalen Ramsey or you know somebody like that that is a long-term piece that can help you be one of those franchise cornerstones. If that is one of them, I'm all for it. And to me, the best option is CD Lamb.
Is he actually an option though? Well, we'll find out as time moves on, but appreciate you guys for hanging out with me on this live stream. Appreciate Bleacher Report as always for having me. Uh, always fun, you know, talking about, you know, all sorts of these scenarios and stuff. Again, let me be very clear. I am not reporting this. I do not want to see, well, I'm going to anyway, but there's going to be an AI YouTube channel or, you know, AI uh, website with all the articles and stuff. And, you know, they're going to take my sound bite and make it sound like this is news and everything. The reality of the situation is this is just, this is for fun. It's a wild off season trade idea. There's five of them, but they're also real names that I think could get traded. So it's not Patrick Mahomes or going crazy, anything like that. We'll see what ends up happening. I do suspect the Rams will make some sort of move. I don't feel like the, uh, the team is fully set yet. And I think they have a precedent they've shown us in the past. You know, I wouldn't be surprised they went back out and got a Keller Witherspoon. I wouldn't be surprised that they re-signed John Johnson. I wouldn't be surprised that they acquired any of these guys on the list. Uh, but that's it. So appreciate you guys. Be sure to follow me on all social media at JK Bogan. Check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Jake Ellen Bogan. And I will see you guys next time.